Hey everybody, it's Cauliflower Man here and I'm bringing you guys another video on cryptocurrency. So in today's video, what I wanted to focus on was um, ASIC resistance. Uh, the reason why I kind of wanted to come out with this video is because uh, Bitcoin Gold is coming out and a lot, I've seen a lot of crypto YouTubers say, oh, it's ASIC resistance, so that's a good thing. The one thing about ASIC resistance that like I don't know why nobody understands this, but it's, it's a nothing burger. It really does absolutely nothing. It's not a good thing. It's not a bad thing. If anything, it's kind of a bad thing. Um, and I'm not saying it's like a terrible thing. I'm just saying it's usually better to use SHA-256 as your mining algorithm um, because then you have the most miners willing to mine your coin. Um, so if you're not using SHA-256, um, like the reason people don't do that is because they don't want to compete against Bitcoin miners and they would rather mine their coin than let the Bitcoin miners do it. That's not really like a benefit. So I want to talk about ASIC resistance and why it's completely meaningless. Um, the first point is is that ASICs, they don't actually centralize mining. ASICs have nothing to do with mining or, or with mining centralization. Okay, It's all due to the supply limit. If you didn't cut the amount of coins that are being mined in half every year and make it so that there's less and less coins available to be mined, then you wouldn't really have a centralization issue. I've said before, like just about the ideal percentage you want a cryptocurrency to level off at is about 3%, somewhere around 3%. You can't exactly predict it, but that's about what gold's uh, production levels are every year, about 3% of the total supply, like between 2 to 3%. Not a very high number, but that's what you want to do. Um, if you did that, then obviously, uh, you know, it wouldn't be like every year, oh, there's only going to be half as many mil or there's only going to be half as many Bitcoin's mine next year, so that's a problem. Like, that wouldn't even come up. That wouldn't be an issue. Um, but it is an issue now because, it, that, I mean, that's what's going on. You're cutting the supply of Bitcoin's that are mined every year in half, so there's less and less Bitcoin's available for the miners. So basically, when you have a supply limit like that, the first miner uh, to start mining, if they know what they're doing, they can easily dominate the entire mining cycle of the coin. Um, so ASICs have nothing to do with centralization. It's all about supply limits. The other thing is, is that when people say that uh, ASIC resistant coins, you know, they're not dominated by ASIC miners. Yeah, they're not dominated by ASIC miners, but they're dominated by hackers botnets. So certain coins, depending on how hard they are to be mined by ASICs, are going to be dominated by botnets like Monero is one that is completely dominated by botnets and they know it um, they're kind of proud of it but there's a lot of security issues with giving hackers a huge amount of your mining power um, the 51% attack has to be done by a very intelligent hacker and they have to have 51% of the mining power so if you're putting a lot of mining power into the hands of hackers that's not a good thing that being said there's still the profit incentive for them to be you know honest or whatever but uh, it's just not a good idea um, third point is the ASIC resistance may lower the network security the reason why I say may is because whether or not it actually lowers network security is actually a very complicated question because the security from at least a 51% attack is completely dependent upon whether or not a an attacker can get 51% of the mining power um, like I said before, you're giving mining power to hackers already. Uh, the other issue is that uh, you have a lower hash rate when you use GPUs. So it almost, like, if someone, you know, if, if, if there's an attacker who can figure out an ASIC for your ASIC-resistant coin first, then he's going to be able to hack it. The second thing is that having a lower hash rate, generally, just generally speaking, isn't a better thing. So using ASICs is for the most part, always going to be better security for your coin. Um, you can't guarantee that it's going to be better security, but uh, it most likely will. The fourth point is that GPUs can be costly due to competition. So if you're buying an ASIC miner, like you're going to be using it to mine Bitcoin. If you're buying a GPU, you could be building a gaming computer or you could be using it to mine cryptocurrencies. So the GPUs are always going to cost you more as a miner than an ASIC because an ASIC is, only has demand from miners while GPUs have competing demand. So it's not really that good of a... Uh, I'm not going to say it's not that good of a buy. It's just you, you pay more for GPUs. Like You don't get as much out of a G, GPU as you do out of an ASIC. Um, the final point is equitability, or I should say this is equitable mining better than security. Um, this is a serious question to ask yourself. Why does it really matter that everyone has an equal chance to mine the coin? 
does that does that really matter in the end? Um, I mean, I guess it's you don't want to cut people out of the game, um, but ASICs don't cut people out of the game. All they do is they make it so that it's easier for a person who owns a computer to mine it. And I'm not sure exactly why that necessarily benefits the coin. Um, I understand the original purpose from Satoshi Nakamoto was his idea was basically like one computer, one vote, basically. But the problem with that is is that there's botnet. So like in reality, that doesn't really work. So let's go ahead and talk about these individually. Again, these ASICs, they don't centralize. It's supply, mi supply limits that do. We talked about this already. With every block having, there's fewer miners in each coin. Okay, that's just the way it is. If you keep every four years with Bitcoin, you you uh, make it so only half as many coins are mined. So obviously, there's going to be less miners. You have less coins for them to get. I mean, it's quite it's quite simple why there's centralization. Um, ASIC mining simply means no GPU mining. That's all it means. Okay, so how as a machine, like an ASIC is a machine that does exactly the same thing a GPU does when it's mining, how does that make the GPU anti-centralization? How is a machine anti-centralization? They do the exact same function, it's just ASICs are better at it. I, that doesn't really mean things are centralized. I don't really understand that argument at all. It's just a machine that does the same thing. An ASIC and a GPU do the same thing. Um, so how does that make an ASIC centralize it or a centralizer and a GPU not a centralizer when an ASIC is just like a GPU except better? Um, there's no real logic in that argument. Again, you can say there's centralization because of su supply limits because that, that ensures that every year or every four years there are less and less miners. That ensures that. That I understand. I'm not saying there is no centralization problem. I'm just saying it has nothing to do with ASICs. Now let's go and talk about these uh, ASIC resistant coins and their problems with botnets. So Monero is mostly mined by hackers and botnets. Why is that a good idea? Why is it a good idea to take all your coins and say, oh, I don't want them to go to these ASIC miners who are legitimate business owners, um, you know, and then be like, oh, let's instead give it to these hackers and these botnets. It's like, why does that make sense? Uh, if you look at something like Bitcoin, anyone can buy an ASIC. Like I know it's, when I thought about buying some ASICs a few years ago, but it was a really shady market and it was really weird. Like sometimes you'd have to pay before you get the ASIC, and I was like, you know what, fuck that. So it's kind of a shady, weird market. But that's just because it's new. But why, like, why is it bad? Like, how is it? How does it keep newcomers out if all you have to do is buy an ASIC? Okay, that's all you got to do for an ASIC. Buy an ASIC, set it up, run it. And it might be like a thousand bucks, and it's like, okay, so you got to pay a thousand bucks for an ASIC. That's not a whole lot of money if you think about it. Um, I know, like, a lot of people in crypto don't have that much money, but to say, like, oh, it's a thousand bucks, I can't do it. It's like, Jesus Christ, get a job, man. Get a fucking job. <laughs> but uh, ASICs really, like, yeah, it, it's a little bit harder to start mining with ASICs than with the GPU. But uh, it's not really a big issue. And then botnets too. The thing about a botnet, like a person who owns a botnet, they don't cut, they don't pay shit. Okay, all that they have to do is infect computers with a virus. So when you have ASIC resistant coins, you're literally competing against people who don't pay anything, and they've got a majority of, or not a majority, they have a majority minority of the mining power. So like with Monero, I don't know how much of it's botnets, maybe like, like let's say it's 40% botnets. Um, that's zero cost to those hackers. So they don't pay anything and they're just getting paid Monero. How does that make any sense? Why are hackers better than ASICs? That's a serious question for anybody who says, oh, ASICs are bad, I want ASIC resistant coins. Why are hackers better than ASICs? And I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying ASIC resistance is necessarily a bad thing. It's a nothing burger. It's a potentially slightly bad thing for a coin, but it doesn't really affect it all that much. If you look at all my uh, um, the coins that I advocate for, most of them are ASIC resistant, but you'll never hear me say, oh, this is an ASIC resistant coin, so that's great. It's I, mean, I never say that. I mean, I think I've said in a couple of the videos that it's ASIC resistant, so it's a little easier to mine, but that's potentially bad for its security. I mean, that's what ASIC resistance means. It'll be easier for you to mine, but it's potentially bad for its security. Um, and let's talk about that here. When we're talking about the ASICs network security, without ASICs, I guess, you, your network 
network security is lower. So a lower hash rate generally equals, equals lower security because all an attacker has to do is get a higher hash rate than you. And something with GPUs too is that it's a lot easier to get your hands on GPUs. So let's say there was some really powerful attacker trying to hack the Bitcoin network like a government. Um, they could get their hand on GPUs a lot quicker than they could get their hand on ASIC. So it'd be a lot easier for them to hack an ASIC resistant coin than to hack an, you know, a coin that uses the SHA-256 algorithm like Bitcoin. So the other problem is, is that if hackers are already miners, a 51% attack is more likely because a 51% attack requires that the attacker has 51% of your mining power. So if you're already giving a huge amount of your mining power to hackers, that's not a good thing. Again, there's still the profit incentive, but like I've said before, with the supply limits, eventually the profit for mining is not going to be that high, and so you'll make more money doing a hack than you will mining it. Um, again, that will only occur like 50 to 100 years out or something like that. It'll be a long time before that occurs, but you know that is an issue. And Why are you giving all your power to hackers? And again, not all GPU, like the less ASIC resistant it is, the harder it is for um, botnets to work on it, but you know, I don't know why you don't just eliminate botnets entirely and just go with the SHA-256 algorithm. Um, the only benefit is that you don't compete with Bitcoin miners, so a lot of coins, uh, like when they initially came out with uh, s s the clones of Bitcoin, this actually was an issue because originally the difficulty adjustment was so, like it would take a long time for the difficulty to adjust, so if you had a bunch of Bitcoin miners mine your coin in the beginning and if they immediately left, then you're you would never solve any blocks because the difficulty would be too high. Now they've already fixed that, like with the new coins that come out, they have a, a, a smoother difficulty adjustment, so that's not an issue anymore, so why, why don't they just go back to the ASIC mining? The one thing that really boggles my mind for anyone who develops coins, um, like if you develop a coin that competes with Bitcoin, if your coin is better than Bitcoin, the way you take out the entire Bitcoin market share is it has to be an SHA-256 algorithm because the way to destroy Bitcoin is to siphon all its miners to your coin. So if you want to, like if you're a cryptocurrency developer with balls, then you make an SHA-256 algorithm because that's where the most profit is. If you don't have big balls, then you go with an ASIC resistant coin. Um, so that's why most coin developers don't do it is because they don't have big balls. Um, the fifth point here is that GPUs, they're not as cost efficient as ASICs. So ASICs, are, they're only used for mining. GPUs are used for gaming as well and just for building computers. So the increased competition for GPUs increases the miner cost. Um, technically speaking, markets sort of react and adapt for this to some extent, but it just means that it, you will always be less efficient doing GPU mining. Uh, always. ASIC mining is just better. You spend less money on ASIC mining. You don't want to spend a huge amount of money on, you, like, you don't want to just rant or for no reason spend extra money on mining. And GPUs, because they have competition, for no reason you're spending extra money to mining or to do mining. And that also creates a problem for people who build gaming PCs. Um, they don't really like cryptocurrencies because of this, uh, because they keep the price of GPUs high. And, I mean, it's a legitimate argument. Why don't Cryptocurrencies just go to ASICs, which don't have anything to do with GPUs. Um, I don't really know. I mean, I do know it's because they don't want to compete with the Bitcoin miners, but that just is an indication that their coin's not very strong. So the final question, is the equitable ownership of the mining better than security? Uh, why should the mining be equitable? Um, why should it be... Like, if you think about something like gold, which has been used as money since the beginning of time, is can you... Like, is gold... is is the gold are gold veins equitable? Like if you go out and look for a gold vein, do you have an equal chance of finding it as somebody else? No, gold is not equitable in its supply and where it's located. Okay, it's sort of in some extent like it's sort of centralized and that you really have to know what you're doing in order to go mine gold. Not everybody can do it. Okay, so when they're trying to make mining of cryptocurrencies equitable, it's almost like saying, well, because gold's not equitable, we need to create a new resource that it's as easy for anyone to mine as anybody else. And it's like, that doesn't, like, that's not even a factor. That has nothing to do with whether or not something is going to work as money. It has absolutely nothing to do with it. It's, again, this is what I'm saying. ASIC, mi ASIC resistant mining, it's a nothing burger. So someone who advocates, like, oh, this is ASIC resistant, like, who gives a shit? Like, I don't give a shit. If anything, that's a negative. It's not like a. It's not a terrible thing. It's just a nothing burger. And if you want two coins that are absolute proof of this, look at Vertcoin and Litecoin. Um, both of those coins have 
phenomenal developers uh charlie lee or whatever his name is and then i don't know who does vertcoin but those guys are doing a lot more for their coins than bitcoin is like they've done atomic swaps on the blockchain which is absolutely like that's a that's a major thing um they've been trying to implement the bitcoin lightning network and there's a lot of news coming out that they're actually doing it quicker than bitcoin um so like but the problem with vertcoin and litecoin is their their prices have never really gone to where they could be and the main reason for that is because other than you know the fact that their, their developers are awesome the only thing they really have to offer is that they're asic resistant and that that doesn't really mean anything so their price has never really gone up that much you have to do something you know something different than the other coins that is actually valuable now the one thing about vertcoin is vertcoin does have they're coming out with stealth addresses or whatever so they're kind of becoming a stealth coin to some extent which is a good thing so vertcoin has some potential but like their main selling point on vertcoin and litecoin was the fact that they were asic resistant and they never really took off all that much and so that's almost, you know, that's market proof that the market doesn't really give a shit. Um, but anyways, that's my video on ASIC resistance. Uh, if anyone's looking at Bitcoin gold for an investment, I would say stay the fuck away. Uh, if you even look at the circulating supply of it, like there are so many problems with Bitcoin gold, even if it was worth it, like even if uh, the ASIC resistance, you know, was a reason not to buy it like you wouldn't want to buy it because it's having huge amounts of problems but this asic resistance like it's a it's complete nothingness and i don't know why people advocate for it as though it's something impressive or new or worth investing in but anyways there will be more videos coming out so i hope you enjoyed this one stay tuned for the rest